Looks like everything switched over. I'm just fixing the audio levels on my headphones. I think everything in stream should be consistent with the background music and mic levels. This is the exact same settings we used the last couple streams. That should be good. Before we get started, I did want to give a special shout out to start to fellow VTuber Silvervale. I am using her Sakura Beats playlist on Spotify for the background audio today. Should be a mix of somewhat mellow and I'm going to assume electronic by this song. I haven't listened to this playlist yet, but figured it'd be a good switch up from the Game Chops playlist that we've been using. And as folks join and, and tune in, I will make sure all of the audio stuff is good to go. Hopefully we don't run into any stream broadcast issues this time. I have not quite figured out what caused the last stream with Guilty Gear to be so laggy. But I'm using the basic stream settings and bitrate stuff for this one and hopefully everything is coming in clear for the folks tuning in if you take a look at the canvas here in clip studio we are picking up where we left off on the last drawing stream we are continuing with the home world or study Last time we did some concept work for a basic outfit clothing for our model here and I have it hidden here but this was the male model. So I figured in order to continue with the, the concept des and design study today I would work on some ideas for the female model. What you're seeing me hide is the alternate color palettes for the outfit. Our female model looks like this. And what I will do is create a copy of this folder So I don't lose the original and this is going to be our working model for now. I don't know exactly how long I'm going to be dedicating to this particular session, but I, I do want to have enough time to get a couple outfits in here. And before we get started, I will sort of preface the stream with a uh, a disclaimer, if I sound a little bit stuffy today, it's because for some reason my allergies have been going nuts. Where I live, it's currently very warm, and I think it's causing the trees to spit out more pollen than usual. So I am feeling effects of allergies a little bit, but it shouldn't be too distracting. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Hopefully I can mute my mic fast enough so I'm not sneezing directly into my microphone. What we're going to do for the study here on this particular outfit is something I alluded to last time when it comes to concept design. In the first session, we focused a bit on a clothing type outfit, something made out of fabric. Pretty common outfit you'd see on homeholders and just casual day to day. What I wanted to focus on for this session is something that I actually enjoy drawing quite a bit and that's armor. I think the idea of armor is very interesting. And for something like the homeworld study we're doing here today, getting a chance to sketch out some concepts for armor would be 
something we haven't looked at in the different homeworld studies so far, but also a good chance to sort of play around with some ideas and just sort of experiment with the whole idea of concept design. Because homeworlders have interesting armor, depending on what they're being used for specifically, be it things like combat, types of combat rather, or more decorative or ornamental armor, sort of just depends. So we'll, we're going to make that the focus of the study today. And since I talked through a bit of the sketching process last time and how it's going to work, I feel like I don't need to spend as much time on that explanation today. Instead, I could focus on just roughing in the, the ideas for the sketch primary that I'm doing on top of the model, come up with some ideas, and work a little bit faster than before since I'm not going to have to talk through every single step of the process here. some point, maybe not in this session, since I want to focus on this particular model, what I'm probably going to end up doing is jumping back to the first model to do a set of armor for that one. Alright. As I'm listening to the, the playlist here, I guess we're going to get a mix of chill and, and more higher energy songs, which is good. I think variety is good so that we don't get kind of locked into one type of music. I haven't been to one of Silverdale's streams in a while, so I don't know what kind of music she normally listens to. I guess this will be a good opportunity for us to find out. What I'm doing is just dropping the transparency down a little bit on the model layer so I can see my sketch sketch layer a little bit easier. What I could do, depending on how the sketch work is going, I could do more than one concept sample here. It's one. Last time we did one of these, I did one design and went with that one, but because I don't need to spend as much time on the explanation of what I'm doing and how the process works, can always do more than one and then we could choose one or both of the concept sketches to move forward with for the actual design
as I sort of add details to the different sections of the armor here, it is worth noting that the material that I'm working with primarily is metal. Combat armor specifically for homeworlders is usually a mix of metal. Sometimes it'll be a mix of metal and fabrics, but for all of the parts that are protecting vital areas of the body as you'd expect, the most common material for a majority of that would be a flexible yet durable and protective metallic alloy. Something that's going to protect against things like weapons or weapon fire, but provide enough flexibility that it moves with the wearer and doesn't restrict their mobility. What I'm doing here is working my way towards the lower torso. I'm thinking about how I want to lay out the armor that's going to be protecting the legs. Lower midsection here, sort of protective plating, is consistent with the other outfit we designed. It's just an actual metal plating instead of a layered cloth type garment. See, we can also refer back to our first model for reference. Not necessarily to lift any designs from that piece, but more to see how we laid things out so we can do something a little bit different. Do something a little bit more sharp like this.
housekeeping note that the joints on the female model are reverse joints. Hey, what's up, Edward? Good evening, or afternoon, or morning, whatever time zone it is where you're at. How is the stream coming in for you since you're the first person to, to chime in today? Noticing any frame rate or broadcast issues like the last time? Also, uh, if you could let me know if the music needs adjusting with the the mic, I would greatly appreciate it, as usual. I'm doing here is experimenting around with how I want to lay out the armor protecting the quads on the model here. We've got these decorative mineral stones here. Similar to what you'd see on an actual physical body, but for those people that don't have them, one popular thing in outfits is to have something similar. Not, not uncommon to see similar patterns set into clothing and armor themselves to sort of mimic the way it looks on actual physical bodies. Okay, yeah, you're probably not going to see a lot of movement because a lot of times I'll be working on a static perspective unless I start zooming in and out a lot, which I probably won't do unless I need to. I'm not terribly worried about any capture issues on drawing streams. But if for some reason my connection starts to tank or something happens that looks like my model is glitching out, uh, that's something I need to be aware of. I am looking at some options to upgrade my internet connection for better streaming. That's probably not going to be something I'm going to be able to do right away. Right now I'm looking into some options. My internet provider right now is Comcast. I think I mentioned before, but here on the west coast, that's a pretty common provider in my area. And I haven't really had issues with their service ever. But one thing I noticed looking at their website the other day is they don't appear to do internet only packages anymore. And that may be an issue because it's probably not something I've mentioned on stream up till now because it just hasn't come up. But I don't watch TV. I do own a TV that's I've used for gaming and for console stuff, but I don't actively watch TV shows. So I, the 
fact that a lot of the Comcast service packages all include cable channels and whatnot is something I've always avoided just because I don't want to pay for it if I'm not going to use it. But the idea that they just have connection packages for internet doesn't seem like it's a thing anymore. So I have to look into that a little bit further because I, I don't want to have to pay extra. But if I don't have any other options... Yeah, I, I hear you, Edward. Comcast, I mean, it's, it is what it is. When I was in Earth School, we went through a couple different providers and we had more issues with DSL and DSL coverage and service when we were out there in a different area from where I live. And that was a lot more of a headache than anything I've had to deal with for Comcast. But if I can if I can get a decent deal for some higher speed connection packages and not have to have someone come out and overhaul anything with my hardware or deal with any installation, that's what I'd like to avoid. But we'll see. Ultimately, if I'm if I'm stuck having to pay for like a basic cable package on top of a higher speed internet I won't like it and I probably won't get much use out of it but that's what I need to do in order to get some better tools for things like streaming which I'm doing a lot of now and I'll have to bite the bullet and do it Potentially upgrading the connection would also do some things to help my overall upload speed. My connection now is not super great. I think I clocked it at 4 megabytes a second upload. 3? No, 3. Two, or, two and a half or 3. I don't know, I've had this package forever because I haven't really been focusing on streaming up until recently. But when I edit things to upload for the stream archives and they tend to be larger files it does take a long time to upload so if I can reduce that as a result of getting a better connection package that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing either Have I seen the South Park episode about cable providers? Doesn't sound familiar. I've been out of the loop on South Park for probably about seven years. Which is a shame because I really like South Park. And their material is always so topical. But if that's something that's come out in the last few years or an episode, then I haven't seen it. I need to go back and catch up at some point because... I can only imagine all the different stuff they've had. An opportunity to make fun of over the last several years. Most of the stuff that I've seen for South Park, I've watched online. I wonder if their, their website still lets you watch recently aired episodes. That's how I was watching a lot of their content before. On the topic of TV shows and stuff that I do follow, been out of the loop on a lot of stuff coming out. And I, I hardly ever watch things when they air, just because I usually don't have time. But I did notice that Rick and Morty started up recently, and that, and that was completely off my radar. 
shouldn't have been because Rick, Rick and Morty is one of my favorite shows. I don't know if I've talked about it here, but I, I really like Rick and Morty a lot. And I didn't even know season five was starting up already. So at some point, I need to go and watch the first episode of the season, which I think premiered earlier this week or last week. I just happened to see a thing online about it, and then I went and noticed that you could watch it. This is a disclaimer for those that are hanging out and, and haven't heard me talk about it. I'm really bad with keeping up with shows. If it's not something that I can set aside time to watch in large chunks, it may take me forever to finish a show or a series, which tends to be bad for productivity because that means I'll either be watching it in small chunks forever or I'll be binging it in one big shot and then I'll lose like a day. Since I've been able to watch things on Netflix in the last year, that's been a problem. But it, I, I did get a chance to watch a bunch of shows that were on Netflix that I, I was meaning to watch for a while. down the lower extremities here for the, the leg armor. I think we'll keep with the theme so far. I was thinking about how I wanted to do the feet and, and put the armor on the feet. We'll see when we get there. Also trying to be mindful of perspective on these different outfit pieces. Make sure we're not getting into skewed perspective territory. I think this overall design is going to work. I'll just have to mirror it over to the left leg, left facing leg. And then I'm not quite sure what to do with the feet. Home roller shoes and foot wear is kind of unusual just because the shape of home roller feet is a little bit unusual. It's not uncommon to see things like cut off boot type garments that cover the area on the surface of the foot while leaving space for the toes. Since the toes are a little more flexible, not 
not having them covered or restricted is always good for when it comes to comfort. I'm going to create a rough design here and then as I work on getting the other parts of the armor sketched in and I'll figure out how I want to finalize the part for the feet. And then likewise I'll have to do something similar for the arms. I think a full arm covering down in the hand is not going to be as necessary on this model just because this model has a shell protecting the arms already. So if that's the case we could do something like this. Ending just below the elbow joint sort of more like a Bracer that's continuing the protective layer from the upper arm and then stopping down here before we get to the lower part of the hand and wrist. I was a move down, I am just mirroring over the lower leg armor and then the shoes.
All right, I think that will that will work for the footwear. I may have to play around with different parts of the design, but that's a it's a decent start for just a rough primary. to do now is mirror over the parts of the arms and we should be just about done for this particular primary sketch cut off about here. zoom out a little bit and we'll take a look at what we've got so far. I'll, I'll hide the model layer in a sec. Not too concerned with getting all of the details perfect on the primary here because again this is just a sketch layer i want it to be as clean as possible but i will be able to sort of switch things around when i go in to do the line work if i need to Answer your question, Edward. One thing I was talking about a little bit towards the beginning, I only went over it very briefly. What I'm working on for the female model on the Homeworlder study today is going to be focused specifically around. I guess one thing I should probably address on this one before we try another one would be tail armor. It's not really a whole lot of 
complicated study when it comes to tail armor. But it's not uncommon to see things like a sleeve or sheath that's connected to the armor piece itself that offers a bit of protection on tails. And since it'd be quite rough if you were in a combat scenario and the majority of your body is protected against weapons or weapon fire and you get shot in the tail. Can't imagine that'd be fun. I also wanted to sketch out a concept design for a helmet. Maybe what we can do is make that part of the second concept sketch here. In fact, I think I'll do that. Let's move this over here. I'm going to call this number one. What I'm going to do now is work on a second sketch. And like I said a little while ago, for the study today, I'm going to be inking and coloring one of these for sure. And then I can always save the other one for another, another session. Helmets are an interesting exercise when it comes down, which again is this part of the head right here. Obviously, the shape of the helmet's going to need to follow the contours of the skull itself. We also have sections and vents to breathe through. When it comes to combat helmets, it's pretty common for these to be electronically outfitted. It's not just armor, but for folks that are working either in a military engagement or things like law enforcement, being able to have head protection that also serves as a logistics tool is pretty common. So you might see things like a digital interface within the helmet that is connected to a system that gives the wearer information or the hair itself would still have room to fall out, as it were. There are helmets that would do something like a full covering like this, and then the hair would be down here. This one is a bit more cut off. I 
Okay. Move on to the rest of this alternate armor sketch here. What I'm envisioning for this alternate one is a bit more of freedom of movement type of armor. Something more like an armored vest or a chest piece as opposed to a more plate-like full body armor. Roughing in the details here, I'm looking at other things that I want to make sure and add. This particular type of armor I see cutting off at the shoulders. body piece would cut off about mid stomach right here and I gotta think about how I want to approach the lower midsection
what I'm kind of envisioning here for the lower part of the body be kind of a mix of armored fatigues something that's meant for good mobility and ease of movement and function while still offering some protection is wearing sort of a heavier under shirt type garment here it's gonna cut off about the bicep and that's what you see here and here Probably have to play around with the sections of the legs here because I do want them to have a little bit of armor plating. I just don't know exactly know where I'm going to put it. something like this that has plating coming off of the waist and midsection so it's upper upper leg protection something like have part of that plating extend up below the waist This particular set of armor sort of reads to me is this would be a type of lighter combat gear or maybe something like a martial arts type outfit. 
because the covering on this one is not going to be as comprehensive as the full body set of armor in the previous sketch, this wouldn't be something you'd wear into something like a firearms combat zone. Just continuing to work on scaling for the head. Ultimately, when I go in to do the actual inking, I'll have to pay attention to that. Imagine the way this particular helmet's set up. This isn't a, an actual empty spot. This is part of a visor that's inset into the helmet itself. So there is there is nothing open here as far as the eye line is going. But it'd be connected to some a sort of screen heads-up display inside that the user would be looking at. And the only open sections would be at the bottom for these lower parts of the crown. This is part of the actual head. Okay, we're going to call this number two. And we'll keep that on hand for a potential alternate in the future. We were to compare the two sketches for the armor itself number one is like I mentioned before sort of full skirmish gear is something that would be taken into a higher danger engagement and number two would be sort of medium armor something that's going to be a bit more hand-to-hand -hand combat focused or used in a situation where you're not having to deal with something like firearms or, or heavy, heavy fire protection. I 
I guess I'll have to make sure and mirror these up closely when I go in to do the actual inking. move on to that portion of the drawing concept process here. Of course, I'm just going to make sure I have this aligned properly. And like we did before on the previous model when we were drawing the details for the line work itself. What I will do is create a layer above the lines to start. Working our way down the body here. Following the primary and doing any cleanup that needs to be fixed here. Like I mentioned before, when we were entering this phase of the drawing process on the other one, we don't have a whole lot to add as far as commentary on this particular section of the process. A lot of it's just inking lines that we've already made and doing cleanup. I guess it would be a good chance to sort of talk about some ideas that I've been kicking around for upcoming streams. The way I decide what kind of content I'm going to do here on YouTube on any given week sort of depends on, on what I've done in the previous week and what I feel like streaming. I suppose that's going to make it a little bit challenging for me to grow a consistent audience because people will be tuning in to different types of content throughout the week as opposed to a type of streamer that just does nothing but art or nothing but gaming. I don't necessarily want to restrict the content here to just one type of thing, so I tend to mix it up. I'm 
but for the next drawing stream, the next drawing stream is not going to be a homeworlder study. We'll be doing more of this as time goes on, but I did want to focus on a different type of concept art stream in the next one. I don't know if that's going to be next week or the week after. But I do know that the next time I do a drawing stream, whenever that is, is going to be Monster Hunter focused. And I don't know if anybody on here is a fan of Monster Hunter, but like I mentioned, back at the debut, that's my favorite video game series. And I want to do some fan art content related to Monster Hunter. It's part of a project that I've been brainstorming for a while. So that's going to be the focus of the next drawing stream whenever that happens. Again, I haven't quite decided when exactly, but that will be a thing for at least the next one and possibly the one after that. I think people will find it interesting. What I'm planning on doing is going to be a, a departure from the stuff that we've worked on for the drawing streams so far. It's still going to be a concept project in Clip Studio like we've been doing, but the focus is going to be a little different. So that's coming soon. on the gaming stream front because I ran into some hiccups with stream quality last time I tried to do Guilty Gear Strive I'm going to be backburnering the streams of that game for a bit but I will be recording some stuff off stream to upload on the channel so that's that'll be coming separate from the streams Depending on when I can actually get down a chance to sit down and record content for Guilty Gear. We'll, we'll see when that happens. It may not be relevant right now, but I'm going to be unable to stream for the beginning of August for the f first week possibly and the end of July got some stuff going on but I haven't quite figured out how that makes sense would be fruit and Ina a collaboration for artists which I think would be really neat to see I think those two personalities would vibe pretty well probably be the most chill stream of any of the collabs too just because fruit tends to be pretty mellow and and Ina is mellow incarnate so it'd be interesting to see that see that play out if they were planning on doing collabs with all the members of Hololive en I wonder who I wonder how else they would pair people up I feel like having Gurda and Hime collab would be interesting Might just might see something like Silvervale and Amelia collabing. That could be interesting too. I don't know, a lot of a lot of opportunity for different combinations. As I've been working my way 
down to the lower body on the inking layer here. I think I actually worked worked faster as I was talking through all that stuff. I wasn't even thinking about the actual drawing as I was talking. I'm gonna keep working my way down. Now we'll make our way down to the feet on the right facing leg. some cleanup on the, the line work here. Once I merge it. All right, now we can do the leftmost leg. After that, it'll just be clean up. Then we can move on to color assignment. Here's another thing I could talk about while we're, we're doing the inking here is something that I have not mentioned on any stream so far. One, because it's not really a huge deal and it's still preliminary. There's no real point in, in talking at length about it. But one thing I'm working on now is an upgrade to my VTuber model. And I'm working with a rigger I met on Twitter. I'll talk a little bit about who that is once it's actually done. I'll definitely be giving credit and updating things like the info section of the profile so anyone on Twitter can see. But for a long time, what I've wanted to do is upgrade the animation level and mobility for my VTuber model here to give it a bit more of a range of motion. Right now the base model that I have, which again is very fine and functional, but it, its torso tends to be a bit more static and I don't have a lot of range of motion on my head. So the point of the this particular upgrade is going to be largely just mechanical. There won't be any different outfits or I don't think there's, there'll be any 
different expressions or anything like that. It'll purely be an upgrade to the movement and mechanics. Which should hopefully tie into things like the, the jam streams, where I tend to move around a lot when I'm working on the jam stream stuff. Probably won't be as big a deal for things like this, where I'm drawing and I'm not really moving around a lot. But the point is to make the animations more fluid on the model itself. Full version, or I mean, I guess it'd be a 3.0. Just about done with the cleanup. about ready to merge this with the lower layer and sort of do like a final cleanup for we get into color assignment. What I'll do is I'll merge these together and then start sweeping through to do sort of like a final, final cleanup on everything. That's primarily going to be just, I think, on the feet here. I think everything else is more or less good to go. That'll do for the feet. doing some touch up around different sections to clean up the line work. We're just about done with this part. I can move on to color assignment. zoom out and do sort of a status check here. What I can do is do a quick comparison 
to the original naked model. And please don't demonetize me, YouTube. I mean, if I could be demonetized, don't don't ding me with like a community strike or whatever. All right. On the right, we have the concept sketch for the model with no clothes on. And on the left, we have the updated one with the armor. And I think that's going to work for what we're doing here. So now the challenge is going to be fixing the color assignment which probably isn't going to be too big a deal. I'm just going to end up deleting a good chunk of things from the old line art. Since the armor set for the model is pretty much covering the entire body with the exception of the toes and the forearms to the hands, you can pretty much just delete everything that's under the line work now gonna be a lot easier than the last one we did Obviously, I have to do some cleanup around the borders, but I think these sections should be fairly straightforward. We go break up, then we make up. Like so. I guess I can clean up the skin layer. We're gonna have to do this for the shading layer too, which I could have done at the same time. I probably, probably should have, that's okay. I'll go back and do that when I actually get to shading. Now we can start working on color assignment for the armor. And I'm thinking for the armor. I do think I want to go with a shade of coloring for the primary color scheme. It's going to complement the actual model models skin color and things like the hair it'd be something like a sort of darker purple metal for home molder armor and things like this it's pretty common to see dyed metals
metal craft is pretty versatile in that you, if you wanted you know, bright pink metal armor, you could get that made pretty easily. I'm going to go for a sort of pale, dark purple. And I'm going to do something I haven't done previously, just because we're doing outfits this time. And that's put the skin layer on... Or not skin layer, the armor color layer on a separate one first to start. That way, if I want to do things like mess around with the... color palette and adjust things like the hue, I can do that separate from the the layer with the skin and hair and whatnot. Do a mix of purples and dark blues. like the idea that this is a layered armor with different sections that are overlapping like the lower layer would be this blue color and the uppermost layer would be purple scheme for these bits like this. to go in here to do color assignment cleanup just like we did on everything else. I'll do that after I assign all the colors at once. accidentally deleted part of the original torso or skin layer. Let's 
see if we can fix that here. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. I think I'll go through and do all of the purple parts of the metal armor first. I'm gonna shift select a bunch of stuff and kind of speed this up a little bit. The way I have my drawing tablet on my desk here, because it's flipped down on the actual desk surface, I have to have my keyboard off to the side so when I want to do keyboard commands, like shift selects and whatnot, I have to sort of cross my arm over because my keyboard's over here on the right. It's going to change the skin color. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I don't think I'm going to be able to back, back step through all of the different line layers to change that. Okay, that's a problem, but we'll, we'll work with it. I could delete all of the sections that I've done here and then add them to the layer above, but that's going to, it's going to be kind of a time consuming process. Hmm. Let me, let me see how far back I can go. Cause I'm, I do want to be able to mess around with the color palette before I set the armor. back as I can go. First off, I'm going to do this. Oh, it's, it's undoing the selections. That's as far back as I can go. All right. Okay, that's that sucks, but we'll have to we'll have to make do. What I'm going to do now is take all these armor sections that I added mistakenly to the skin layer, and I'm gonna just delete it. Oh, I. Actually, hold on. Might not be totally screwed here. To think resourcefully. What I could do, I'm gonna have to zoom out for this. All right, I've got another idea, and we'll see if we'll see if I ruin my drawing. I'm gonna take all of the sections that we mistakenly put on the wrong layer. is going to require some degree of cleanup. I think ultimately it'll be okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, I know it's not going to be perfect. All right. This will be a good exercise in how to think resourcefully when you're using these digital tools. What I've got here is all the stuff that I did not mean to put on the original skin layer. I'm going to cut it off, or use Control X, cut it out. And then I'm going to create a new layer above the layer we wanted it to go on, and turn clipping off. Paste it in. Knows 
All right, so what we have now is three layers. The original, which I'm going to fix, clean up right here. This is just the sections we cut out that bled over a little bit. Okay. We have our original skin layer intact. This is the color scheme that matches the model. This is what we don't want to edit at all. We've got the first armor layer that I started drawing on. And then here's the second one that I mistakenly put on the wrong layer that I just copied and pasted. All right. So if you merge these together, now everything is on the same layer. Okay. That's good. If I had to do all that over, that probably would have been another 20 minutes. Now I can one stick to the correct layer. I don't want to. I don't have that problem again. If I shift select all of the highlight sections that we were looking at before, now I can add them to the correct layer. All right, now we got the highlights in there. And now I can move through with the pens, mechanical pencil tool and clean up all of the sections that are missing color. And then once I do that, I can go in and actually mess around with the color levels and the hue, saturation and whatnot until I get the armor color I want. working my way through and doing cleanup on all of the sections of the armor here that are that need it. Let's do sort of our final sweeps through the color layer. I think we managed to avoid a, a total disaster when it came to wasting time here. Let's see. I do want to mess around a little bit with the color balance and hue, see if we get 
a better color palette than our initial one. This particular one looks like it could be a good alternate palette overall. All right, I think we're doing all right here. Okay, just about done with the upper body for the purple sections. Keep moving down, filling in all the different sections here. Then I'll go back to the top and do the next color and work my way down. I guess if I see any spots on the original skin layer that needs to be cleaned up, I can do that along the way here. Thank you. 
Okay, now I'll do it for the left leg. Now, just need to do the right side, and we can go back and work on the next color. Color level for the highlights. I still haven't figured out where I want to post these finished concept sketches after these streams. I may opt to put them on Twitter first. And then maybe if we start accumulating a lot of these, I can put them in a central spot like Instagram. I do want to have a record of all of the stuff that I make on stream when it comes to drawings. I just haven't really thought about how I wanted to put it online for people that aren't able to tune in. Only to give that some more thought. Alright, now we're moving on to the more teal looking highlights. I need to be mindful of the, the layer layers of the armor here. The sort of teal sections here that I'm coloring are underneath the purple, so I need to make sure and shade them as such. Likewise, the sort of magenta layer right here that I've got colored on, that is underneath for most of the sections. So stuff like this, like this, and this are all underneath. These upper highlights on things like the edges of the armor are not underneath, but the highlight is the same color. So I just need to make sure I'm adhering to the, the hierarchy of all the parts and make sure the highlighting and shadows don't get screwed up. couple more sections here to go then I'll be able to do the final cleanup
I need to also be careful not to put my shading on the wrong layer. Like so. I think that's okay. I don't want it to be on the same layer as the base color assignment layer for the armor. Right, this would be a good status check before I start doing the, the shading cleanup. There shouldn't be any highlights on this layer. I have done that before where I'll, I'll work for like 30 minutes or so doing shading and then realize I put it all in the wrong layer and have to cut it off just like we did here and then paste it on the right layer and then make sure it looks good. only thing left is to do the inner highlight sections this magenta color this shouldn't take long since there's mostly small sections here sections to go. that'll do it for all the sections we need to highlight. Now I just need to go through and clean up the lines on the shadows and then we will be done with this particular concept drawing. the section. For 
for the cleanup here on the shading. I don't need to stick to a specific color section. I'm just going to work sort of top to bottom across all the different highlights and then clean up the shadows all at once. Also be mindful not to miss any sections. This song is by Lily Pichu. I haven't been keeping track of all of her music projects, but Lily Pichu is a really well-known YouTuber and streamer, part of the Offline TV group, and she also makes music in addition to all the other stuff that she does. And I know she does a mix of sort of... She's experimented with all sorts of different genres... I know she's done lo-fi, she's done these kind of piano arrangements. All in all, she's very talented. And she's pretty fun to watch, too. I've been following Lily Pichu for a bit. Her and her insane boyfriend, Michael Reeves. Making way down to the lower extremities, the legs and the feet. And we are just about done cleaning up the shading layer. to do now is go through and do some final sweeps for cleanup just to make sure there aren't any other sections that I've missed and then we will be just about done with this concept piece this one took this one took a little bit longer than some of the other ones I've done.
my, my layer hierarchies again. See how we're doing here. I'm gonna zoom out. And let's do our final checks here. Like I mentioned before, we're Take a look at our two models. Right here. This one. I want to see if the quality is noticeably different. If not, then I'll just upload the edited archives so that there's a bit higher quality footage for people to watch. Yep, we'll go ahead with that and wrap up the stream. Once again, thanks to all the folks who stopped by. I will see you guys next time, and have a good evening.